This is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, I'm literally going to answer one of the viewer's questions that actually I got. And uh, it's very simply, John, should I go raw 100% cold turkey? Well, you know, literally, the answer to this question would be a whole video. So actually what I've done for this viewer is actually I gave a local talk in Las Vegas, Nevada. That was about an hour. And I filmed it for you guys. And this is my talk on an introduction to raw foods. Plus, also, how to start raw foods uh, the most sustainable way possible, in my opinion. There's many ways to go raw, whether you want to go 100% raw overnight or, you know, cold turkey or a little bit of time. And it's my message to you guys that I want you guys to do it the most sustainable way possible. What does that mean, sustainable? That means you're going to be consistent at it over time. You know, I make the videos to share with you guys my opinions and my views on things. And this is the techniques that I recommend for the highest level of success because to me that's what life's all about the highest level of success and you're only going to be successful by eating the right foods and doing it appropriately so i hope you guys enjoy this uh basically introductory video for people that are new into raw foods or maybe even if you've been doing it a while and want some more hints and tips and i'll definitely be sharing some of my 18 years of experience on raw foods with you it was filmed at pure health las vegas which is an awesome health food store in las vegas and if you do live in the Las Vegas area, I highly encourage you guys to visit the uh, meetup.com uh, group for the Las Vegas Raw Foods um, and uh, join that group. And all my uh, talks, when I give a talk out in Las Vegas, will be posted there. All right, so I guess without further ado, let's go into that clip. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thanks for coming tonight to learn more a little bit, a little bit about raw foods and how to start a raw foods diet. Um, I know many of you guys seen this on the raw foods meetup list and I know there's like over a thousand people on the meetup list which is amazing and a lot of people may have been doing raw foods for a while but there may just be some lurkers on the list and it seems to me that just not a lot of there's not a lot of introduction to raw food talks there's just a lot of like oh this is how you do the recipe go home and make it and this kind of stuff so I wanted to give uh, you guys a pretty good uh, education here where I share my 18 years of experience living on a 99.999 percent raw foods diet um, successfully so I've learned a lot through all these years and that's what I'm here to share with you guys today and just basically my experiences the first thing I really want to talk about is why I got into raw foods I know many of you guys have many different reasons for getting into raw foods maybe for weight loss maybe to have more energy maybe it's to rebuild your health maybe it's to get better from a dis-ease in your body maybe it's for you know uh, to help with your allergies or for animal rights or to conserve resources on the planet and it's true in my opinion the raw foods diet will do all those my specific reason why I got into raw foods was for my health and my health alone how many people have heard my story about why I got into raw foods specifically no. so a handful of people so I just go over it very briefly so I don't bore you guys but I got into raw foods for my health. What happened right after I got out of high school is I had what's called spinal meningitis. And spinal meningitis, for many of you guys that know, is a life-threatening disease. I was literally hospitalized, I passed out, woke up in intensive care with IVs coming out of me, and I asked the doctor, great hey, doc, when am I gonna get out of here? Because my whole belief system was, hey, you get sick, you go to the doctor, they make you better, and then you go home, right? Well, in this case, it wasn't happening because he told me, hey, you might not go home. And I'm like, wait a second, this is not supposed to be happening. Like, you guys are supposed to make me better, right? They're like, well, you have spinal meningitis and there's no guarantees, you know, that we could do anything for you. So I thought, wow, man, this is like, this is rough. I mean, I just had my whole life ahead of me, graduated college, and now, like, here it is. I could potentially be losing my life. And the last thing we're ever going to see is a stupid hospital room with a tube TV set <laughs> and drab walls that smell bad. And it's, it was not a fun place to be. But the, the good thing that I think about, even to this day, was I had a lot of time to think about things. Because I had done a spinal tap, and my back was hurting, and then I just messed up, like, really bad flu-like symptoms with a bad headache, and now I had the bad backache, and all this kind of stuff. And I thought a lot about a lot of different things. Like, hey, John, even if you had a million dollars, you write a check, Mr. Doctor, one million dollars, do not cash unless John walks out of here. Would that really guarantee that I'd walk out of there? No, because the doctor told me he couldn't do anything. I, you know, the best medical care at the time, Kaiser, Permanente, whatever stuff. 
And uh, he couldn't do anything, so all the money wouldn't have helped me. And I really thought about, man, John, what's, what's more important than money? Because we're all taught in our society in this day and age that, like, you know, being successful is having a lot of money. Well, hey, you can have a lot of money and not have your health. And I learned that, man, maybe your health is more important. So I learned this at a young age. And uh, to this day, that's really what drives me and motivates me. Not necessarily money. And yes, I'm not going to say it's not important. I'm not some hippie with long hair. I mean, I, all this kind of stuff. But money is important. You need to have enough to get by. But it's not the number one thing that I believe everybody should go after. You know, I mean, you could sacrifice your health for money. I mean, my brother works at one of the nightclubs on the Strip. And for what he does, he makes, he's a bar back. He makes a lot of money, walks away with good tips. I mean, all the tip outs and stuff. And that's a great job, but he does this at the risk of his health, in my opinion, because he gets very little sleep because he works, you know, at whatever, eight o'clock at night till four in the morning, totally messes up his sleep cycle rhythms. Um, also, he's around a, a bar, people smoking, so now he's breathing in cigarette smoke, secondhand cigarette smoke's proven to, you know, to probably cause cancer and things like that. And, uh, and then he just doesn't eat, eat well. And just the combination of factors, I'm really sad for my brother. And I mean, he knows what I do, that I've been doing this. And I always tell him when I see him, Jim, you need to eat more fruits and vegetables. You need to get more sleep. And maybe you might want to think about, you know, giving up your job one of these days because maybe your health and your little three-year-old son, you know, spending time with him is more important, you know, than making a ton of money. Because you only get one chance at this life, right? And I want to... You know, but it's cool. If he wants to live, if his values are that that way and that's where he's at now, I appreciate that. I just hope that he's, you know, going to be healthy and live a long, healthy life despite, you know, doing all the stuff he does. And it's really bad because lately, because he's not getting enough sleep, he's not as aware and alert as he could be. And he's gotten in actually, he slammed his finger in the door last week at work. So that, that was a worker's comp thing. And then, because uh, he was, was too tired and he has to resort to three-hour energy drinks or some other things that are just stressing the body out more and then last week he got into a car accident uh you know he was he was stopped and somebody had backed into him but i mean he probably could have avoided that if he was more alert and saw oh shit somebody's backing up let's move back a little bit so they miss me but he was he just froze because he's not totally mental alert and i mean i'm totally on the other end of the spectrum i think you know eating a plant-based natural diet like this it makes you totally alert man because there's no there's no filters i mean the food, actually, in my opinion, the wrong kinds of foods wear you down, so you're not, you're kind of sedated in, a, in an effect, just like not going on enough sleep. And before I go on, I really want to talk about besides just eating healthy, it's very important to get enough sleep as well. And that's something everybody in here could change starting tonight, go to bed an hour earlier. You know, my rule of thumb is I go to bed when I'm tired. If my body's feeling tired, that's my signal. Like, hey, John, you need sleep now. You're tired, man. You can't hold your eyes open. I know you want to edit one more video, but you can't. Just go to bed now, man. Screw it. Lie down. And then when I do that, I'm also, I'm out. I just, I'm like, okay, I'm sleeping. I'm lying down. I'm out. So it's not even a problem to go to sleep because i am just been up enough that day and I need sleep. And then I wake up whenever my body wakes me up. And I don't wake up by alarm clocks or anything like that. And... In this way, I feel I'm getting the maximum amount of sleep that I need because I'm going to bed when I'm tired and I'm waking up naturally and I've created my lifestyle so that I could do this. And I know some people may have nine to five jobs and may not have this luxury, but even if you have a job, you can, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, I wish I could sleep in a little couple extra hours and you're hitting that alarm clock, maybe you should go to bed an hour, half hour earlier and then maybe see if that the next morning you don't want to hit that alarm clock and you're ready to get up for the day. I mean, when my eyes open, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, okay, I'm up. I can't lie here in bed. I'm too antsy. Let's go. And I just start doing stuff, right? And so I like think everybody should be like that instead of like some people like roll out of bed or lie in bed for another 10 minutes and, you know, they just can't quite start their day and not as motivated to do that. So sleep's very important. Exercise is also another thing that's very important besides just the diet. I mean, we are built to move. I don't necessarily agree with running, you know, 10 mile races or anything any day but just some kind of movement whether you're walking hiking you know uh, I don't know climbing um, I don't know pedaling in place jumping up and down while you're watching TV or make, juicing in the Vitamix or the juicer I mean just do something to get some movement in you man it's real, rebound is really good they got a really cool machine here in the back the turbo sonic that'll kind of get some movement in you if you can't do real movement because it'll actually vibrate you and that'll stimulate movement in you and get your lymph movement and all this kind of stuff. But movement and exercise is also a very important critical key besides just the diet. So, you know, besides just teaching the diet, I also want to teach a whole integrated system and holistic system of just getting healthier. Because if you do one component, that's great. 
but you know if you do them all that's gonna be you know you're, it's gonna be complete and whole and you're gonna get much better results in the end so to, I kind of got off track with my story so with my story I got into raw foods because of my health I, lo I l nearly lost my life upon leaving the hospital because I did make it out that time the doctor said John the reason why you got the spinal meningitis because I asked him is because you have what's called complement immune deficiency and I'm like what's that He's like, basically, you have defective genes based, you have a defective immune system based on your genes. So that means I had a chronically weak immune system because of my, or the doctors blamed it on my defective genes from a childhood or that I was born with or whatnot. And this wasn't so surprising me because actually as a child I had asthma, allergies, and e eczema. And these are actually, based on my research, autoimmune conditions. So I've always had these conditions, and I guess this, it, it kind of blew up after maybe not living the healthiest lifestyle. I mean, I thought I ate pretty healthy. My mom and dad shopped at the co-op back in the 70s and whatnot, and we ate dried fruit, and we couldn't have, like, trick cereal. We could only have, like, the granola and the, and the, you know, Cheerios and Rice Krispies, and we couldn't have cookies, and my mom didn't even buy, like, hot dogs because it had sodium nitrate, which is not so healthy for you, and, but we, I got hot dogs, and we went to, like, friends' houses and stuff, but... <laughs> But nonetheless, uh, you know, even trying to eat healthy wasn't good enough. I still got sick, and upon leaving the hospital, the doctor wanted to give me like an immunization against um, spinal meningitis again, which didn't really, I don't know, help against all the different types because there's many types. And I'm like, no, I don't want any more. I don't want any immunizations. I don't know if I believe in that because I mean, he couldn't help me when I was critically in need, you know, a week earlier. I don't know if I want to believe what he's saying now. So after I left the hospital, all I knew is I needed to do something because I had a chronically weak immune system to build my immune system so that I wouldn't be back in the hospital again. Because he said that I could, I won't get a reoccurrence because that, I had won that battle or whatever if you want to call it. And, uh, but I could be susceptible to some other kind of disease or something. Like if you have a cold and your husband or wife has a cold or your friends have a cold and you're hanging out with them or your coworkers, but they have a cold but you don't have a cold even though with your husband or wife you're sharing maybe two, hopefully not two brushes, but somewhere, <laughs> the same living quarters and you're breathing on each other. But that's because we all have immune systems and many people's immune systems could fight off disease and whatnot. But I'm not that, you know, lucky in my, my immune system, I mean, not that strong. So I, need, I knew I needed to do something to build my immune system. And this is a, a little bit of a journey, so I had to kind of research and find out on my own without the internet, <laughs> how to do this, because the internet really wasn't around then. And uh, one thing led me to another, to make a long story short, I got into juicing through Jay Cordage, the juice man. He talked about how juicing could build your immune system. So I got on the phone and ordered the juice man juicer. Um, in the meantime, they said it was gonna take two weeks to uh, get to me or whatever, and I'm like, no, I need it now. And so I went down to the local Walmart, got a Walmart juicer for $24.97 on clearance sale. It was my lucky day that day brought it home and I was juicing just like the juice man did it was an infomercial and the blade would slow down and grind to a screeching halt and like smoke would start coming out and the motor started to smell like burnt smell and I'm like man what's going on here I'm just doing what the dude did in the infomercial and it just started smoking I'm like okay this thing's defective I took it back to Walmart and they had one left so I brought that home did the same it did the same thing so I mean basically I mean guys get what you pay for and I learned this is a cheap inexpensive juicer and it's not gonna work like the one on the TV and that's why the one on the TV is a lot more money. And so I was nicer to it, and at least I was juicing. I noticed how wet the pulp really was, and it wasn't getting everything out. When I got the Juice Man, it worked much more efficiently. So I liked that a lot. But along with the Juice Man juicer, they had six cassette tapes. So I'm dating myself a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with the, on each cassette tape, he talked about different juice recipes, and you know, you could juice for your for your nails, juice, you know, whatever celery, cucumber, parsley, and for this, juice this. But when I put in the first cassette tape, he said something very interesting that I'll never forget. He said, the one thing that prematurely ages you faster than anything else is cooked foods. Don't put cooked foods in your body. I remember him saying that, and I'm like, thinking to myself, man, who's this freako dude? Like, he's a whack job. Like, everybody I know eats cooked foods. My parents taught me to eat cooked foods. My second grade teacher taught us the four food groups and we we're supposed to cook our food so I'm like I'm not hearing this rhetoric I hit stop on the cassette player turn the tape over hit rewind and hit play and was listening to his juice recipes and all about that stuff because I was at the point where I was cool with the juice recipes but little did I know all the ju fresh juices I was drinking was raw foods right 
So anyways, I wasn't quite ready for the message yet at that point. And then later on, I was actually uh, in a health food store in California. And the bottom shelf, actually, it's probably about as big as this one. On the bottom shelf, they had a little, uh, a little booklet called Cleanse and Purify Thyself by Dr. Richard Anderson. And what this guy talked about in the book, and I hadn't read a book since college. I picked up this book in the health food store. I must have stood there. It's actually about this size. I must have stood there. It's about that size. I must have stood there for like, um, I don't even know how long, 15 minutes, like reading the book. Like I was probably got halfway through the book. And I'm like, man, if I like this book that much, I should just like buy it and take it home. So I bought it, took it home. He talked about how like death begins in the colon. We need to do this colon cleansing, get all the mucoid plaque and all this other stuff out of you so that you could better absorb food. And he once again talked about raw foods. He says, if you're going to do this cleanse, number one, you need to alkalinize by juicing for six months, which I already had been doing. And number two, you shouldn't go back to doing what you did before. And then you should eat raw foods because those are not going to, you know, toxify your body. And I thought like, okay, here's another whack job. <laughs> Talk about raw foods again. I'm like, okay, well, I don't know about the raw foods thing, but all I know is I'm going to try this cleanse because he had some amazing testimonials on how it could build your immune system, you know, uh, heal your skin. People were psoriasis were in the book and had like testimonials and before and after pictures. And I had uh, eczema and ichthyosis as a child and which the doctors told me that I would grow out of when I was 13 and this is a big news to when you're like 11 years old because you know you want to date and if you have you know I was called things like snake skin and lizard skin when I was uh, in grade school and it's not fun being the kid the different kid so I got teased and it was kind of bad and like the doctors gave me hydrocortisone creams and I put all this stuff on and nothing ever fixed it and then I'm like okay well maybe this cleanse and in addition to helping my immune system and all this stuff could heal my skin and uh, and I went on the cleanse and it did. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I remember taking a shower and uh, looking in the shower and looking at my skin. My skin was like normal, like a normal person's, and it meant so much to me. I started crying. Now, to this day, I don't know if I remember why I was crying exactly. It was because my skin was cleared up and I was so happy and overjoyed, or I was so scared shitless that I had to eat this raw food diet for the rest <laughs> of my life. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So then at that point, I'm like, okay, if this, if this cleanse could do this, maybe that dude talks about raw foods, and then just juice man talks about raw foods, maybe this is just something I need to do. So at th that point on, I'm like, okay, for my health, I just need to eat raw because I'm not going to be back in the hospital and be t potentially losing my life again. So that's what I've decided to do. And, it, and since that time, back in 1995, I've been 99.999% raw. I've had the bouts, you know, in the early years with eating like a vegan McDougal cooked foods, baked potatoes, and burritos and things like that and I noticed how it made me feel differently like I had a big breakup so I emotionally ate but back then I ate those foods and like my energy level was super pretty super high and you know after eating raw foods I think I was probably eating it for a couple of years and then I ate some cooked foods and my energy level like dropped really low and kind of like how I talked about earlier like waking out of bed in the morning usually my eyes open up I'm like okay let's go for the day and get up and boom zero to a hundred in you know two seconds I like woke up and I'm like okay Let's lie here for a little while. And I just didn't really feel like getting up and wasn't so motivated. It like really took the energy out of me. Um, so that, it, that always like sticks in my head now, you know, to the, even to this day, because it, it's a motivation for me to keep doing, to get the results that I like and that I want to feel. And I don't want to have to feel like that every day. So one of the things I really want to get over, or a point that I want to get across to you guys is to learn from your experiences. I don't, I don't want to say mistakes, but just experiences, because we all have experiences. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. I don't necessarily like to put a judgment on it, but I just like to learn through my experiences. And you know, literally, I'm really thankful for my experience of getting this bottle meningitis, because it now put me in the position I am in today, which I believe I'm in fairly decent health, and also get, it puts me in the position to help my fellow man, because also at the time when I was in the hospital, I thought about well, what if like all the money in the world is important? What's really important? Well, I, I believe, you know, uh, giving back and helping your fellow man, I made like a promise uh, to myself at the time, if I got out of here, I'd do a lot better to live in service and help others than to just make, you know, the million dollars because, you know, the, making the million dollars, it just doesn't do anything to help the people, the planet or anything in the long run. So that's why I'm committed today to, you know, giving free talks like this and to making a whole bunch of YouTube videos. How many people have seen some of my videos online? So I have over 1,400 videos now online wow. Wow. that are all free 24 hours a day, seven days a week on various subjects, such as juicers and blenders and dehydrators and how to eat raw foods and also about how to garden. 
and grow your own food, which in my opinion is the most important thing to me this in this day and age is to grow your own food, know where your food's coming from, and also to you know pick it and eat it fresh, you can have the highest quality food. So besides learning from your experiences, another thing I want you guys to do is have a strong reason to do raw. My reason is literally to this day, it's like, okay, John, if you eat cooked or if you eat things that are not good for you, you could end up in the hospital. And that's one place I absolutely do not want to end up again. So I, I just don't eat those things. Plus another thing that motivates me is like, I don't want to feel you know, the way if I eat certain things. So that motivates me. So you want to have some reasons or motivations to eat a raw foods diet because that will help keep you through it. I mean, in the beginning when I started, I was literally like 100% willpower because it's like I just had, okay, John, if you eat cooked, you might be back in the hospital. If you don't want to do that, just eat raw. And I pretty much was able to stick to it. That being said, this is not the strategy that I recommend for the majority of the people out there because, in my opinion, it is really hard. And we're all human. We're not perfect. And you will slip up. You know, I know it'll happen. So that, that, that's the reason for this talk, to give you some strategies to uh, eat more raw foods. And that's what I always like to stress and to teach people is, it's not about eating all raw or 100% raw or nothing. You know, It's about eating as much raw foods and as much fresh fruits and vegetables and as much high quality homegrown fruits and vegetables as you possibly can. Because that's gonna truly make a difference. So with that, let's talk about what are raw foods. You know. For some people, raw foods is this. It says on here, raw, gluten-free, nut-free, yeast-free, kale crunch, nature's green super snack. And yes, I've eaten this before, and I know the owner, Blessing, she's a great lady, and they're pretty good. But if you just ate kale chips all day, you could say, oh yeah, I eat raw foods, I eat kale chips. And I'd probably agree this is probably better than eating potato chips all day. But there's a few issues with just eating stuff out of packages, I believe. I mean, it's, I like to look at things instead of like black and white, which many people get stuck in. This is bad. This is good. I like to look at things as shades of gray and like there's always green. It's like, okay, this is really bad. This is not quite as bad. Of course, you know, uh, this is better than this, but it's not good as like maybe fresh kale with some, you know, dressing and like literally this is just dehydrated kale with the dressing. The dressing is simply pumpkin seeds, lemon juice, chia seeds, extra virgin olive oil and Himalayan crystal sea salt. So I'd much rather, instead of you guys just eating the kale chips, just buy some fresh kale or pick fresh kale out of your garden and then make a dressing with those exact ingredients in the blender, blend it up and pour it over it. That's a step in the right direction. So no matter where you are in your specific diet now, I always want to encourage you to just take one more step over. Like if I'm just coming out of the bathroom, my goal is to re reach, to walk to that wall, you know, I got a distance to go. And even if I start here, you know, if I don't put one foot in front of the other, I'm not going to ever make it to the wall. And you might not ever make it to your goal of 100% raw, but, you know, just being this much close to the wall and almost being able to touch it is a lot better than, you know, being way back here and eating, you know, a smaller percentage of raw foods and not doing the best you can. Because what I've learned is the more fresh fruits and vegetables you eat, the better you're going to feel, the healthier you're going to be, the healthier you're going to be. I mean, that's the whole message that I'm going to share with you guys today, and now I'm going to talk more about that. So what are raw foods? To me, raw foods are fresh fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds to a smaller extent. You, we could come up with rules. Some people have rules like, okay, it's raw if it's not heated above 118 degrees. So if you just have that rule and these kale chips are dehydrated at low temperature, this would be raw. You know, some people might have rules like it has to be a whole food, you know, grown in nature and can't be something that's made in a factory. Then maybe this might not be raw. I mean, there's so many different variables, and I give a talk entitled, Just Because It's Raw Doesn't Mean It's Healthy, where actually, as a collective group, we'll have a blackboard up here, and we'll go, we'll make criteria, and we'll all know the criteria by the end of class. I'm not going to give that talk today, but I will let you know that I do have this talk on YouTube. It's about an hour long, and it's definitely worth your time if you really want to know what raw foods are about. Um, to me, to sum it up, raw foods have a few components. So number one for me is, is it water rich? After all, we are 60 to 75, 65 to 75% water, depending on who you ask. And if the food that I'm eating is not that high in water content, it's gonna dehydrate you. And if uh, you're dehydrated, many diseases can uh, occur in the body and many things can happen. There's a really good book, The Body's Many Cries for Water. And he talks about this in the book. 
And so I don't want to eat things that are going to dehydrate me. So that's one of my criteria. Is it water rich? Another thing for me that's very important is, is it health building? I mean, if you're into weight loss, will this help me lose my weight, lose weight, or will it help gain weight? For me, I think about, is this going to build my health or take away from my health? And that's also important because I almost lost my life. And then in, in my other main criteria that I, that I put up to the test, or for me what a raw food is, is does it have life force? You know, I believe that life comes from life. If you're eating things that are not alive, maybe you won't have as much life. I don't want to be as lifeful and have as much life as possible. So I try to eat things that are alive. Things that are alive will also have enzyme content. Things that are alive will also, you know, um, be a lot more nutritious. Because once you start cooking and things start decaying, then nutritional values are lost. So those are my three criteria for is it a raw food. Another thing that's very important to me that's not in my main criteria, but also important is minimally processed. Is the food minimally processed? So for example, on the oil here, some people would consider this uh, raw olive oil, and it says organic ester virgin olive oil, cold pressed, and it's raw and wholesome foods for vibrant living. So in some people's definition, this might be considered a raw food. And yes, well, in technical definition, if you're just going not heated above 118 degrees, because that's what most people believe raw food is, it would meet that criteria, but it wouldn't meet mine. Number one, it's not water rich, right? Oil is 100% fat, there's no water. If it did have water, it'd probably mold and go bad. Uh, number two, uh, is it health building? Some people would say it is health building. I would probably say it's you know not as health building as maybe like whole olives that are sun-dried. And uh, does it have life force? Well, I don't know, we can't sprout the olive oil and make another olive tree. You know, well, we could take a whole olive that has a pit in it and take the seed out and uh, grow that into a whole tree. So in my definition, this was not necessarily going to make it, but in, I rarely ever eat any oils. I would much rather eat the whole food. So eating whole foods is also something very important. And whole foods are not the foods that you buy at Whole Foods. It means that it's whole and unrefined, right? Things that you could see, like if there's an apple tree, you could see there's apples growing on the tree. Are there any olive oil trees out in nature, you know? Are there any kale chip trees? Well, there's kale. I wish there was kale chip trees. We'd not be hanging out all day. <laughs> but there's kale. I actually have collard trees that grow collards, but not um, dehydrated kale trees. <laughs> but uh, so if it's whole, if it occurs out in nature, you know, like wheat. Wheat could grow out in nature and you could get the little wheat kernels, but flour, you have to take the wheat kernels and then refine it into a flour, which does not occur in nature. So, you know, I'd much rather, I mostly, I eat actually, for the most part, gluten-free diet, unless I'm going to a potluck or go to a rest, raw food restaurant and they have something with gluten, but I eat a pretty much a gluten-free diet. Um, if you did want to eat it, it'd be better to like just get the whole kernels and, you know, sprout them and eat them versus, you know, powder them into a flour and then eat it like uh, most people are these days. Another thing I look at these days actually is very important to me is, you know, would I be able to grow this and eat this and find this out in nature if I was there? You know, like for seaweeds, I like to eat some seaweed sometimes and I harvest my own seaweeds off the California coast. And it's legal to do that. You could harvest 10 pounds a day. I have a video on that as well. But I wouldn't eat it all the time. I mean, but if I was under a fruit tree or, you know, uh, plants growing with leaves I could eat, I could totally eat those. So I really want to try to get that whole foods aspect in there because a lot of people miss that point. I mean, they'll start using things like this stuff, organic coconut sugar crystals. Like there's no sh coconut sugar crystal trees in nature. And this is actually a fairly big process that I'm not in favor of on how they make the palm sugar. What they do, because it is from coconuts, they take the, the coconut palm and it's not a tree, it's technically a palm, which is like a tree, but not a tree and they chop off the rack where all the coconuts would grow, like a big bunch of coconuts, they chop that off so now the coconut tree can't produce the coconuts. What happens then is all the nutrients that would have went and flowed into the coconuts to make the water and the nut and the meat, now just is this sap that they collect, mm -hmm. that they collect this sap, then they take the sap, they uh, basically boil it down like they would with maple syrup, and then they dry it to make these crystals. So you would never get these in nature. And in my opinion, you know, when we're eating things that are not found in nature, that's when things go awry. I mean, we've been on this planet for I don't even know how many millions of years, uh, whatever, history buffed or nothing. But I do know that, you know, there wasn't coconut sugar crystals uh, even just probably 100 years ago. You know, and a lot of the foods that we're eating today are man-made inventions of literally this century. And just 100 years ago, they were not here, and we are all been taught by commercials and marketing and even by our parents and teachers 
and other people, this is what we eat, because this is what's available in the store. Well, I want to really encourage people to just get back and think about, would this food wouldn't have been around 100 years ago? Did they have this? I mean, if they, the back 100 years ago, they didn't have factories where they made a lot of this processed stuff. We'd be eating simply out of nature. And that's what I really think is really important with raw food. So hopefully now, we all know what raw foods are. They're just foods found in nature that are minimally or unprocessed. Some people might be smart act like, Joe, what about dehydrated foods? It's processed. To remove the water. Well, dehydration could happen in nature. That being said, once again, I'm not all raw foods or all nothing. I'm all about gradients, right? Shades of gray. You know, so once again, if we're going to this wall that's like 100% raw, doing the best you can, like dried fruits are like pretty close to the wall because it's pretty much the whole fruit minus the water. If we want to take like, you know, fruit sweetened yogurt with artificial fruit flavors, you know, that's, that's a lot further back to like not being so healthy in my opinion. So we always want to try to do the best we can. So what are the benefits of raw foods? Well, to me, the benefits are things like having more energy. Your, your weight is going to naturally be whatever it's going to be. So if you're too light, you'll probably maybe get a little bit uh, heavier. It'll normalize. And if you're weight too much, then you might come down in weight. I mean, literally, when we're eating the plants that we're, we're designed to eat, and this is a whole other topic that I'm not really going to get into, I believe that by nature we're frugivores and we're designed to eat, you know, fruits and vegetables and plant foods where we're not really designed, although we can eat animal products, you know, be it meats, cheeses, or whatever like that. So I'm not, I'm not an advocate of those. I do understand some people like those, believe they need them. In my opinion, you know, uh, we don't need those, and they may be a hindrance uh, to your health. And if you do choose to eat them, which I'm not going to tell you how to eat, I'm just sharing with you guys my research and my beliefs, is that you should eat, in my opinion, you should eat no more than 10% of total calories of animal products, if you choose to do that. But I personally don't do that myself and don't recommend that people do that either. It can't be wrong, right? Sorry, just a little joke. You, you could eat raw <laughs> animal products, actually. No, not the meat, not the meat. Just, I, I just couldn't help. Yeah, sure. So, um, but the benefits of eating raw foods, very simply, our bodies are just going to work appropriately and work right. Literally, when you're giving your body the correct fuel, you're not putting excess burdens on it. If you're not eating fresh fruits and vegetables and plant foods, in my opinion, you're going to have some problems. It's going to create blockages, stoppages. I mean, literally, just eating the diet we're supposed to eat, huh, man, it's just, it's, it's, the, Basically, just eating anything else backs you up, and in my opinion, is not so healthy. Uh, some of the other benefits of raw foods is number one, if it's the kind of raw foods that I talked about, is the high water content. You're going to stay hydrated, and number two, it's for me. I'm really into like the nutrition. I'm not not a nutritional, you know, nutritionist or nothing like that. But you know, I've done a lot of research because it's my. This is my main area of interest. Of course, I've done this all for me, so I don't lose my life, so that I could know that I'm doing this the best way possible. Because another principle I want to leave everybody with today is a principle of CANI, C-A-N-I. It stands for constant and never-ending improvement. So what I try to do today, tomorrow I try to do a, a little bit better. So this is how the Japanese, after, after we bombed them in World War II, you know, uh, companies like Sony, Toyota, and Honda came about, and they started making products that are a lot more uh, full of quality and, and better design. So my friend just bought a Honda Fit for example, and the Honda Fit is a little miniature car thing, a smaller one. And uh, the back seat's really cool. Like, I've never seen a back seat like this. Most back seats, you know, in regular cars, they kind of, you know, have the seat and they have the backrest. And then you might fold down the backrest because it's a hatchback, and then you might have almost like flat, and then it kind of goes up a little bit. Some cars, this will actually pop up, like in my Golf, and it goes flat like this. So you can have a nice uh, place to, you know, uh, cargo space. But in our Honda Fit, you can actually, it does fold fairly flat. But besides that, you could actually fold the seat back up this way, and then all the way from the base of the floorboard to the roof, now you could store things like tall and wide. So you buy like a big screen TV, you want to slide that in or whatever. It's kind of cool. And this is the principles they've done. Like even though they know they got a good product, they always think about how can I make it better? You know, how can I make my diet better, you know, tomorrow than I did today? Whether it's starting to grow some more food, maybe it's to eat one extra apple, because I didn't eat as much raw food yesterday, and just by having one extra bite, that's going to improve and take me to a better course, because small incremental changes, you know, uh, by the end of the year can be huge, just like if an airplane's going from here to Hawaii, you know, one or two degrees 
difference, you're going to half degree or a fraction of a degree is going to change where the plane ends up, right? So and the plane's constantly correcting the whole flight. And so you guys could do that throughout your whole you know, life. You could constantly make small improvements to change your course so that you totally could hit the wall and uh, you know, be healthier and better at it. Another way to simply change your course and direction is, and another small improvement you can make is chew one extra time. Chew, seriously, seriously, chew one extra time. I mean, when I sit across uh, the table from my dad, I love my dad, and I got him eating a lot of raw, and he was just actually juice fasting uh, a week ago at a True North Health Center in Santa Rosa. He was on a one-week juice fast with my mom, which is huge news, because my mom has always been against kind of like what I do and stuff, even they know it. My dad's kind of more open to it. She's having some health challenges, so she, I got her juice fast and they felt better, and now she's asked me to do some coaching with her, which is really nice. Um, but my dad, he's not a good chewer. He'll have his spring mix, and he'll chew it two times, and he'll swallow. And while we, we could probably get away with doing that on fruits that are really soft, actually I had some pretty good papayas from the Trader Joe's uh, just the other day. And we could, if we took two, two chews on the papayas and swallow, we'd probably be pretty good. I still like to chew it up a little bit more than that. But with the spring mix, we're not really designed to, you know, digest full leaves that are fairly, you know, not too well chewed up. We want to really make it into a mush. And, you know, why do we give babies baby food? Because they don't have teeth, right? Now, because we have teeth, we're expected to make our food into baby food and mush to get the optimal digestion, right? And you know, I chew like 50 to 100 times each mouthful when I'm eating my nightly salad. And it does take me an hour or two to eat my dinner. And I'm not joking. I'll like get my, make, my, make my salad, I'll sit in front of the TV or YouTube. You know, actually earlier this week I was watching America's Got Talent, like that show. <laughs> and, um, and just watching AGT, just being entertained and just one bite of salad, chew, 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 watch, watch. Maybe I was on the internet too. And, you know, and then okay, I need another, need another bite, and you know, just chew, 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 and till a mush. And it takes me a while. Many people might not have the time, so that's where the juices and blenders may come in to help you get better digestion without having the time to do that. But even by just taking one extra chew every every mouthful every day, at some point you're going to get to the point where your food is a mush. And so that's just a small thing you can change today. Oh, one extra chew. That's super simple. So I just want people to take them from. You know, one level, just up a little bit more. I mean, one of the things I've heard is, uh, by the inch, it's a cinch. By the yard, it's hard. So don't try to, like, you know, do a hurdle from here to here. Take a small step first, you know. And so small incremental changes over time will get you to where you need to be. Instead of, like, I'm going to go raw tomorrow, right? It's not really the message that I have for you guys today. So uh, another question is, uh, should you go 100% raw overnight? Or, you know, go 100% raw cold turkey. Well, after some of the stuff I've said, my answer is, for the majority of the people, no. So what's a better way to do it? Well, small incremental changes at a time. I mean, many people, actually, I read some of the comments that I got in um, when you responded to the meetup. I asked two questions. And some of the comments were like, you know, I, I can't maintain 100% raw because I got, uh, you know, kids and a husband and all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's not about being 100% raw. It's just about making small incremental improvements and eating more raw foods. You know, and that's what I really want to get across today. You know, you don't have to be 100% raw. What you do need to do, in my opinion, at least for minimally, is be a 100% whole foodist, whole plant-based foodist. So that means you're going to only eat plants. And even if you got to cook them, you're going to eat whole foods, so it's, you know, things that are found in nature, not things in packages, bottles, and jars, and eat plant foods. So that's, that should, in my opinion, that should be the base. And then from there, you want to, you know, increase the raw foods percentage, so eat more fruits and vegetables. So my diet, for example, consists of the majority of fruits and vegetables, and with about a handful or so of nuts and seeds a day. And that's all I eat every day, and people might think, John, that's rabbit food, man, that's boring. Well, I have so many different varieties of things that I eat every day. I don't really even eat the same thing. You know, like something I had yesterday I won't have today. Let's see, today I woke up and I had like 32 ounces of coconut water. And then after that, what did I eat for breakfast? I, I had one papaya for breakfast. And then after that, I had um, uh, like, kind of like a salad. I made some guacamole and I dipped lettuce leaves in it. And then uh, after that, I made a green smoothie with bananas and spring mix, 12 ounces of spring mix, some bananas and coconut water. 
you know, that brings me to where I am right now. And then I'll, tonight I'll co go home and actually my roommate's making ta raw tacos tonight. <laughs> Out of uh, off the eggplants. <laughs> no, no, these are raw tacos. Oh, they're raw tacos. Yeah, so wow. she, what she does, she takes like, um, she's she's amazing. She takes some like zucchini, fresh picked zucchini that I picked, and she takes that, uh, skins it, puts it in the blender with some uh, chia seeds and flax seeds and maybe some spices, and then she dehydrates that. But she's not dehydrating it all the way. She's just taking the moisture out so that when it's dry, it's actually pliable and foldable like a little wrapper. Mm, wow. That's the first step, and we have special molds to put in the dehydrator that makes perfect round uh you know tortilla like you know circles then she then she makes the meat of the tacos which is kind of interesting it's like i'm growing eggplant in my garden in vegas because it's something easy to grow and does really well in vegas it's probably one of the best crops to grow in vegas even though i don't really haven't really eaten a lot of eggplants and never really ate it raw too much but she found a creative use to you do with it because we got so many eggplants. We're like, what are we going to do with it? And she just screwed around with some of the juicers. And she put it through the juicer, through the slow star juicer, and just mushes it up into a, a mixture. And then I don't know how she got this idea, but she put some, like, uh, chicken seasoning. The stuff you, I don't know what it's called. The chicken seasoning for stuffings and stuff like that. And she puts that in there with some other stuff. Oh, some psyllium. And then she uh, basically just dehydrates that. And when you do that, it kind of makes it like that fajita meat like that you would get at a Mexican place, like it, it sticks together, it's really chewy. And, and, it, and it, because of the seasoning, it tastes like meat, but it's just egg dehydrated, not even fully dehydrated, just partially dehydrated eggplant to get some of the moisture off it. And then we just fill that up with some, you know, chopped up lettuce and some avocados. I actually got to stop and get some cilantro on the way home. And then we'll just have those. And so that's all plants. Wow. With actually very, very few seeds, no nuts. And it tastes amazing. It's all because the secret is in the seasoning. Mm -hmm. So I, one of the things I love to do is just, you know, buy some organic seasonings. And yeah, a little bit of organic dried seasonings, non irradiated and stuff. Put in some dressing could, you know, make your dressing now taste like, you know, taco seasoning. You could buy a taco seasoning. You could buy a pizza seasoning, Italian seasoning. You know, the one we got is the, the chicken seasoning for, you know, stuffing. Totally different flavor. You could get a curry. And just by adding a little seasoning, you can get those taste sensations that we're used to. Because when you eat a hamburger, it's not, you don't get the flavor of like the hamburger. They're adding seasonings and probably salt to it and stuff. Those are the flavors that you're really missing. So when you're eating raw foods, we need to just bring some of those spices and things back. And I'm not saying make your whole diet out of spices, but just a pinch of spices will do wonders to make the flavor taste good so that it'll be more agreeable with you. Because I know some of the people said on the survey that they couldn't handle the raw foods because it got so boring and wasn't exciting. But by just using some seasonings, you could bring up the flavor and bring up the tastes. Um, so I don't know how I got onto what I was eating for dinner time. Oh, because I, what I ate in a day. So the thing is, we just want to eat more fruits and vegetables. So even if you're eating, you know, whatever you're eating for breakfast, for example, I don't know, what's, what's, what does somebody want to volunteer what they have for breakfast today? And I could tell them how to raw, raw rise it. <laughs> yes. Oatmeal. So oatmeal. So. Just have oatmeal, and yeah, oatmeal's, it's a great food. I'm, I can't really say anything bad about oatmeal. You know, get some organic oats and you cook them up, and that's far better than eating, I don't know, granola that's, you know, baked or something, you know, at hotter temperature, or Rice Krispies, way better than eating bacon and eggs or sausage or anything like that, or even pancakes, because it's pretty much just flattened oats that you heat up, and then now uh, you're just eating them. So how you want to raw eyes that is what you're going to do is just, you know, make your oatmeal, and then you just take some bananas, one or two or some fresh fruit and cut it up put it on top after you make your oatmeal or just actually take an apple and eat the apple first and then eat your oatmeal super simple by just making once again we're making small changes we're not like having a whole bowl full of fruit we're just eating the oatmeal and then a couple extra fruits with it and you know what I would suggest is over time you want to increase the amount of fruits and you know slowly make the oatmeal a little bit less each day and then you'll get to the point where you're not even eating oatmeal you're just eating fruits Maybe you'll never get there. Maybe you'll always want a little bowl of oatmeal, but a lot more fruits. That's great, because now you're eating more fresh fruits. Maybe you could, instead of doing that, you could eat the oatmeal and then make a fresh vegetable juice before your, your oatmeal, or make a fresh fruit juice before your meal, and that way you're making, you know, eating more fruits and vegetables, or make a green smoothie and then have your oatmeal. So, and we could do this with every meal. So what, what did somebody have today for lunch? Everybody's scared. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Anybody want to volunteer? Fresh salsa that I made with my Vitamix. Oh. And I just, but I had real chips. I, I got a, those chips oh. you talked about. I, I need that recipe so I can wean myself off of yeah, yeah. corn chips. I, I gotta have that crispiness yeah, yeah. to dip it in. Otherwise, All right, sure. So the, yeah. So what he had for l uh, lunch today was salsa made with his Vitamix. So that's already great. It's already half raw because he had. You know, salsa, they just put tomatoes and different things in the Vitamix, pulse it up so it's not super fine, still has some texture to it. And then you just dip in some corn chips with it. So that's great, you know, but how can we take this one step further? Well, what we could do instead is, well, they have these chips that are actually raw chips. So this would be better than corn chips, but these guys, at six bucks a pop, be quite expensive. <laughs> So you might not want to do that, but it'd be nonetheless It's a step in the right direction because now the corn hopefully it's you know baked corn instead of fried corn and hopefully it's organic corn So it's not GMO corn um, But we could get these so that'd be one way to do it. you could buy dehydrator and make something like these And there's many recipes on the internet, but you know dehydrating things once again We're taking the water content out and yes while it is you know, you know uh, having some sauce and some cooked chips there's way better than somebody going to McDonald's or somebody having a you know steak and hamburgers or you know chicken nuggets or whatever how about the way the better raw way so the better raw way might be to buy something like jicama jicama is available at most mexican markets and it's amazingly inexpensive maybe 33 cents a pound sometimes and you want to skin the jicama and just chop it up into chips it's not exactly crunchy like corn chips but it has a nice mouth feel and it's a little bit crunchy for a for a fresh uh vegetable basically and what you're going to do is you're going to just chop that up into chips and dip that in the salsa and eat it and then it's like, oh man, I still missed the crunch. So now the next bite, get a corn chip and do the same thing. So now you're eating half as many corn chips with more vegetables. Mm -hmm. And if that just keeps you satisfied, that's great. Stay there because now we've reduced the amount of corn chips you're eating by half. And maybe then maybe, you know, do that for a month. And then next month, oh, this hickama stuff's pretty good. Maybe I'll do two hickama chips to one corn chip. It's moving in the right direction. Then you're not having to buy six dollar a bag you know raw chips and you're eating more fresh stuff because that's my whole message eat more fresh stuff right one day you might just no i don't even need the corn chips this hickman stuff tastes great i love it and then maybe you could start experimenting with other vegetables there's things like drew some artichokes that are just starting to come into season now you able to find those at certain select stores like whole foods usually sells them actually they have them right now actually those are another great chip that you could just slice up they're also known as sun chokes Actually, they actually grow very well here in Las Vegas. You can actually grow your own, and I'm growing sun chokes now, and I'm going to just dig those up and then just, you know, yeah. dig it up and then chop it into chips and then eat it with salsa or guacamole. They're super good. I mean, there's many other vegetables you can just chop up and use as chips. But once again, we want to keep your base as the corn chips or and get the healthiest corn chip you can, obviously baked, organic, not fried, all this kind of stuff, lower salt. And, you know, that's, that's all I want to ask of anybody is just to, increase it a little bit better every day hopefully you guys are getting some ideas to just take your diet a little bit further right let's uh, did anybody have dinner yet before they came no what'd you have eric eggplant how'd you have the eggplant it was uh it was uh barbecue meat, so it was kind of roasted but you know it was but i had no meat you know, it was, so but i didn't have eggplant so. so he had eggplant for dinner so let's see how would i take the eggplant dinner and raw fight well i don't know to, so, tacos! <laughs> I'd make the eggplant tacos that I don't know how to make them. A roommate knows how to make so. No, but seriously, what I do is, like, I'm not a, if, if you are going to cook your food, I'm not a big fan of roasting things or cooking at high temperatures. Based on the research I've seen that, you know, if you cook things at high temperatures, it creates more toxins, uh, heterocyclic amines, uh, all different kind of things. So the best way to cook your foods is by steaming or by boiling at a lower temperature or even things like slow cooking or slow cooker for a longer period of time at a lower heat. This is also going to preserve more nutrition in there if you need to cook your foods. Uh, probably for that, for Eric, I mean, I know he's already eating a pretty healthy diet and, you know, eggplants, great food, and I would probably not roast it myself and dehydrate a little bit. But what I'd probably do instead is instead of just eating the baba ganoush, I'd probably have a nice large salad or even a small side salad and then have the baba ganoush stuff too. So that way you, now you're eating a raw salad and then some of your cooked stuff. And by that way, now, instead of just eating all cooked eggplant, which is still great because it's plant-based, uh, you know, vegan, uh, you could now have a salad and now have plant-based vegan still, but now you're eating 50% raw and 50% cooked. So there's all these different intermediary steps. It's not about making these crazy raw food recipes that people are teaching, right? 
because yeah, it, it takes a lot of time and energy, and you got to learn how to do it. And you know, you might not do it right. And you, the ingredients might not be available, and they charge a lot of money for you to go to those classes. No, just keep doing whatever you're doing, and you know, by using some of these techniques, by you know, every other mouthful, have a fresh raw something, or you know, uh, before you eat something else that's cooked, you know, add fruits or vegetables to it. Add an extra apple. Make a fresh juice. Make a fresh green smoothie. Drink that before your eggplant dinner. You know, not not too difficult. Does everybody got this concept of just increasing the fresh fruits and vegetables and decreasing maybe every other mouthful? Now, if you are eating, you know, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables along with your main course, uh, in the instance of the baba ganoush, I would eat the salad first and not just have a bite of salad, a bite of the baba ganoush, unless that's what you need. It's because the fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables uh, generally digest faster than the other things. I would always eat the fruits and vegetables first instead of mixing them together. So as with the oatmeal uh, example, I would eat the fresh fruits off the oatmeal and then the oatmeal. Of course, that'd be optimal. I mean, that's that's what I, I would do. But you could, I mean, if, if that's like too much for you because you're moving too fast because you can't eat straight fruits, you know, a bite of oatmeal with a bite of the fruit. It's still great, right? We want to get to the point where we're eating the fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, by themselves and then whatever else we're eating. You're supposed to wait a half an hour? <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so there's things called food combining and optimally, you know, like I was at the Woodstock Fruit Festival and most of the time for dinner I have a, a, a salad or a lot of vegetables and at the Woodstock Fruit Festival they had like berry, they put out blueberry, organic blueberries one night and it's all you could eat and it's like blueberries are very expensive so I'm like okay I'm just eating as many blueberries as I can and then I want to eat my salad so I got a big bowl of blueberries and I ate them all and then I like uh, you know sat around the table and talked with people for like a half hour, an hour and then I had my salad that I ate after that. So that'd be the best thing if you are eating fruits you know to get better digestion, give some Give them some time to get through, you know, your digestive system before you eat something else. But that's kind of like the extra credit step, you know. Don't think, oh, John said I gotta eat this and wait a half hour. I mean, I know everybody's busy. We got shit to do, right? You can't be waiting a half hour to eat stuff. So do the best you can. If you can wait five minutes, that's better than just cramming it down right after. And make sure you chew well, right? Right. Hey, what? How many chews is chewing well? <laughs> chewing well to me is chewing it into a mush and it depends on the item like chewing a papaya five times is probably a mush chewing some kale that's really hard greens you know could be 50 times chewing some lettuce some spring mix that's much softer consistency to start with is less you know if you if you don't have the time once again put these items in a blender with some liquids <laughs> And then blend them up, and then that'll do your chewing for you. Or a food processor. Or a food processor is really good to break that fiber up. Won't do as much as good as a blender. Mm -hmm. And then we still want to chew it up in our mouth and get some saliva mixed with that for the best digestion. So the next thing I want to talk about is the two best raw foods you should eat every single day. Does anybody have any clues about what that is? Kale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like the kale is definitely good, and if. For those of you guys that go into Whole Foods, how many people have seen Whole Foods has what's called the ANDI list, A-N-D-I, it's called the Aggregate Nutrient Density Index. How many people have seen that? A couple people. So the Aggregate Nutrient Density Index is a scale that Dr. Joel Furman came up with where he ranks foods on their nutrient to calorie ratio. So how many nutrients to how many calories? And at the top of that list, the list goes from 1,000 to zero. It's 1,000 and things like kale, collards, watercress with the top at 1,000 and things like a soda or like at a zero. You know, in my opinion, the standard American diet is rich in foods that are high in calories but low in nutrients. We want to flip this on the backside because if we don't, if we want to get what every American gets, which, you know, 66% of Americans are overweight, and in my opinion, they're probably not in the best of health. You know, that's, we know what, what to do to do that. We want to do the opposite. So the opposite is, is eating low calorie foods with high nutrient density foods. And if we look on this list, Aside from the thousand mark and going down the list, you know the top the top of the list are like leafy green vegetables. Then we kind of transition into the below, just below that, the vegetables, and then right below that we have the fruits. So the two foods that I believe everybody should eat every day is fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Not too hard. And you know whether it's kale, collard greens, bok choy, just get some fruits and vegetables in you. And you know just because kale's at 
a thousand on the list. Oh, kale's the best one. I'm going to eat that each and every day, you know. As people, we like to compartmentalize. It's like, okay, this is good, so I'm just going to do it every day. You know, <laughs> and it's like, you know, once again, right and wrong, good and bad, yes or no. What if there's like, you know, a maybe or sometimes, you know, there's always in between. So we always want to try to, you know, not just say kale's the best, I'm going to eat every day. Well, well, let, kale's good, let's have kale today. Maybe tomorrow we'll have dandelion greens, the following day we'll have, you know, bok choy, the following day we'll have some romaine, maybe the following day we'll have some miner's lettuce. I mean. We always want to rotate all the different foods in our diet, not get so stuck on like, oh, every day for breakfast I have oatmeal and bananas. Well, maybe t t tomorrow you'll do bananas and, I don't know, uh, a salad or a green smoothie and bananas or, you know, I don't know, kamut, rolled kamut and uh, bananas. We want to always try to like eat different things because every different food on the planet has a whole spectrum of different phytonutrients, vitamins and minerals uh, in them that I, in my opinion, are very important for us. And if we just eat kale, you're only gonna get the nutrients out of kale, whereas you know, you're know you not gonna get the nutrients out of broccoli, and they've done studies that show there's things in broccoli that can help prevent cancer and whatnot. I mean, some of those same ingredients are in kale, but they might not be in the same quantity. So we really wanna rotate our diet and eat different things and always mix it up. And one of the things I love to do is I like to make it a game. I'm like, okay, John, you gotta eat something different today than you did yesterday. So like, I'm like, I was making like uh, dressings out of uh, tomatoes because I got a lot of tomatoes and some macadamia nuts and that was a pretty good dressing with some peppers and so I'm like okay what can you do that's not tomato and macadamia nut dressing because it's really easy okay let's make grapefruits and hemp seeds so I juice grapefruits and then I blend out with some hemp seeds and that was my dressing and I dip my you know lettuce into that and like you know okay that's what you had yesterday John you can't duplicate that again let's do something different you know so every day it's like always like trying to come up with something new because I know a lot of people get into raw foods and they might like be like, okay, I'm going to use oil and vinegar dressing today, oil and vinegar dressing tomorrow because that's all I know. All right. it, I have a video that I actually made here where I demonstrate how to make different salad dressings. It's like over an hour long on YouTube for free. So you'll come up with how to make salad dressings that are whole food based, healthy and delicious um, using some of my tips. Another thing besides just the the, the Salads I like to eat, I like to eat raw food soups. So soups are basically concentrating more vegetables by, you know, some of the soup bases are, you know, fresh juices. So if I have a lot of cucumbers, like right now I have a lot of cucumbers, I could just make a cucumber juice and all the cucumber juice is my soup base that I'll blend maybe with a handful of nuts and maybe a little bit of miso and have like a miso soup. And then I'll just chop up vegetables or, you know, put some seaweed in there, you know, some cut up avocado, maybe some a few cut up olives in there and that'll be my soup and it's mostly vegetables <laughs> and I have a video on how to make that how to make raw food soups online as well for you guys to check out to you know include more raw foods into your diet so yeah two raw foods eat every day fresh fruits and veg fresh vegetables and uh, let's see what are some of the ways to eat fruits and vegetables well we all know like we talked about you could just pick them up and eat them so whether you're eating a salad whether you're eating an apple or a banana you could just eat it Another way I like to encourage people to eat the raw fruits and vegetables is by blending. So we talked about the Vitamix and how you just put those in the blender and blend them up. So like my lunch today was a green smoothie with coconut water, bananas, and 12 ounces or 11 ounces of spring mix. And just drank it up. A lot easier. I was on the go today doing a lot of stuff. So uh, blending, uh, whole, or juicing. So juicing is really good, especially for people new getting into it because it reduces the volume that you're going to need to eat. It also digests better, in my opinion, because, I mean, literally, if you think about what we are, we are nothing more or less than juice extractors. We put whole foods in here, and one side we get the liquids, one side we get the solids after we've taken what we need out of it, seriously. And so what the juicer does is the juicer takes out the liquids and the solids so that your body doesn't have to. So it makes it a lot easier for you to get the nutrition out of it because we have little villi in our digestive system that can only get nutrients out of foods in a liquid state. So if like a lettuce, a whole leaf of lettuce is floating by there, it's not pulling the nutrients out unless it's in the mush because if it's in a mush, then the, the, there's, there's, there's fiber, but there's also the mush contains liquids that the, the villi could act on and get the nutrients out. So juicing is another really excellent way to, to get the uh, fruits and vegetables in you. So John's guidelines for healthy raw food recipes. Let's see here. Well, 
my guidelines are mainly we want to use whole foods. So, you know, a lot of people might sprinkle salt on their foods. And I always want to, you guys to play like a game when you think you need to add something like, okay, salt. It's true. We do need an adequate amount of salt. You know, there's a lot of people that say, never eat salt. We could get all we need through our natural foods and fruit, through fruits and vegetables, which is absolutely true if you pay attention. The problem is I've seen many, some of my friends actually that don't pay attention to what they eat and they think they're getting enough salt and other minerals. And, you know, one of my friends actually became salt deficient because he was shunning and staying away from salt. Now, I'm not advocating pouring salt, but you do want to be aware of this. And, you know, I use salt in very small amounts. I, I generally don't use actually salt like this out of a shaker. But what I do is I, I eat foods that have small, much smaller amounts of salt. I mean, the US RDA for salt, like on this kind of salt, is probably like one teaspoon. If you go into a raw food recipe, you know, a lot of them might add, oh yeah, let's just add a shake in there. That's like, oh man, that's like two teaspoons. If you eat that dish, now you've exceeded the amount of salt that the US RDA recommends, which in my opinion is already too much. And, you know, so a lot of raw foodists might add just too much salt to some of the recipes to try to make it taste good or whatnot. And, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's better to get your salt from whole foods. So the best way to get salt, if you don't want to eat this, you know, once again, we're looking at, you know, uh, like on a scale of like, you know, bad, if we want to say bad to good or good, better, best. Like, so this would maybe not on, be on the end that's not so good. And on the far end of like the best salt would be like something like fresh celery. That fresh celery has a high sodium content, it also has a water content. If we want a little bit more saltier, concentrated flavor, then we could um, take the celery, chop it up, and dehydrate it. Now we remove the water, so now it's gonna be a lot more saltier, so that's be you know one step down from that. If we want to take another step down, maybe like something like seaweeds that have naturally occurring salts, and then maybe one step down from that would maybe be something like some uh, foods that contain salt, so like I like to use some sauerkraut that has salt added to it but it's a small percentage of the of once again fermented vegetables for the most part maybe a step down from that is something like miso which has salt in there but also has, it's a ferment of uh i usually get the chickpea miso or the soy miso so it has some salty flavor plus other foods in with it and not it's just not just extracted salt so that's a, one of my criteria is eating more uh, whole foods or foods that are more closely resembling what we what we be, we we found find in nature, with other nutrients in the package, right? Because this is all this is is pretty much sodium with some other scant trace minerals in there. I want to get you know foods that have you know phytochemicals and phytonutrients as well as the minerals in there. Same token, you know, I'm not a big fan of adding uh, sugar. Uh, to different recipes, to raw recipes. I mean, a lot of different raw food desserts, they use things like organic coconut sugar crystals, agave, and all these things. You know, once again, on my, it's like I have the salt continuum, that's what I'd call it, or I have a sugar continuum. So the best sugar is not like, you know, the worst sugar is probably like the white sugar, totally refined, totally extracted. Maybe the best sugar for me on a raw food diet is eating whole fresh fruits, because that's nature's package. It has sugar, it has vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, uh, fiber, and everything. One step down from that would be maybe like dried fruits. So actually today I bought from the China Ranch date guy 15 pounds of dates that are not certified organic, and this will last me probably actually at least to the end of the year. Um, not certified organic, but he does not spray pesticides or fungicides or herbicides on his property, but he does use conventional fertilizer. So that's, I'm, I'm, I'm accepting to that, and they're good dates, and I recommend you guys go out. It's about an hour and a half away. You can visit the ranch, and right now it's date season, so you can see them harvesting, and you can try all the different kind of dates they have. Where's that? Uh, China Ranch is in China. Tacopa, Tacopa. Okay. Uh, California. I have a video on that, too, where I go there and show you guys about that. Is it worth the drive? It's worth the drive, yeah. Take, take, take a loved one and go for a nice hike out there and go on a, a day. And then, actually, they also have hot springs out in the area, too, so, so you can yeah. search for that if you want to check that out i mean i'd make a day trip of it i mean it's an hour and a half. i mean the guy drives into vegas like once a week to uh you know go to costco and buy stuff and but when he's here he'll also deliver dates to you because he used to go to the farmer's market but i don't know if they're doing that now but if you call him up they'll deliver dates and the secret is it's usually like about five dollars a pound for dates which is a pretty good price plus they're local but if you buy it by the box by like i buy by the 15 pound box he'll charge you three dollars a pound 
for most dates aside from the Medjools. So it's $45 for a 15 pound box. And if you put them in the fridge, they'll last a while. Plus these are dates that you money can't buy. I mean, I got these black dates that are actually fairly large. They're nice right now because they just started harvesting in September. They're so soft and moist and chewy. They're not like the mm. crappy ones you buy in the store. They're all hard and nasty. Mm. Plus they got like at least a dozen different varieties of dates and each tastes totally different. So anyways, back to the sugar continuum, that's a sidetrack. But so the best sugars are fresh fruits, the next are dried fruits, so that I would consider dates somewhat dry because they don't have full moisture content, although today I also have the option of buying these barhi dates that are fresh dates. So they're actually yellow and they're still really moist on the inside, it's really chewy. It, it reminded me of eating sugar cane, but there's a little bit of astringy, but most date varieties you cannot actually just take the unripe, they're called kalal dates, and actually I had one today, but they're uh, they're like five dollars a pound, so the ones I got were three, but they're pretty good too. And when they ripen up, they actually turn into like this maple syrupy, sappy consistency. They're crazy, so you can eat them when they're still hard and crunchy, and more chewy, kind of like an apple texture, but like way sweet. Or you can wait till they totally ripen up and then turn into like goo. And that's really so. Anyways, fresh fruits, dried fruits. Then maybe after that, I would do something like. Um, I would, I would probably use honey. I'm not a true vegan. I do use honey. That's like the only non-vegan food that I consume. And then, because uh, it's at least a whole food, because there's honey hives in nature that you could, you know, put your paw in if your bear and get stung. Not that I'm necessarily recommending that, because I try to generally stick with the top two fresh fruits and dried fruits as my main source of the sugars. And then, of course, down the line, then you got agaves and all these kind of things, which I really don't recommend, because it's not in a whole food state. They've, okay. they've taken out a lot of the different nutrients, they've taken out the fiber, they've taken out a lot of minerals and vitamins. I mean, if we look at this, and I encourage you guys to take a look at Nutrition Facts. On this Nutrition Facts, I mean, look, it's all zeros all the way down. Fat, zero, saturated fat, zero, cholesterol, zero, sodium, zero percent, potassium, one percent. I mean, vitamin A, zero, calcium, zero, vitamin C, two, iron, zero. Like, this, by definition, is a junk food because it's calories without any nutrients. But people in raw foods still will use sugars and things like agaves. Once again, I mean, if it's in its whole form like fresh fruits or even dried fruits without the water, man, much more nutrients. And, you know, I really want to encourage you guys to eat for nutrients and not calories. This is high calories, low nutrients. So a healthy raw food recipe guidelines, basically you're just looking at whole foods, uh, mostly fruits and vegetables. What you're going to do is if you go to a raw foods talk and there's a chef in front of you making a raw foods uh, dish, and there's many here in the valley that do uh, chef presentations, one of the things I really want to encourage you guys, like we talked about earlier, is I really want to encourage you guys to look for recipes that are water rich. So things that are water rich, so things that have high fresh fruit and fresh vegetable content. If they're making something that they say is raw and it has mostly nuts and seeds and things out of bottles and jars, you know, it's still a highly processed and actually high fat food. And while it may be raw, it's not as healthy as eating like a big salad or something, or maybe even, maybe they're using dates. Dates and nuts would be a far better recipe than using, you know, agave and, you know, all these things out of packages. And a lot of people in raw foods movement, in my opinion, they haven't gone through the 18 years that I have, or they haven't gone through a health crisis, and they haven't gone through all the research you know, to find out what's really the healthiest foods for us to eat. They're just trying to teach what they were taught and what's in most raw food recipe books. And what I'm teaching is not in most raw food recipe books. You know, I would rather you guys, instead of make, eating some of the different raw food recipe creations that are, you know, low in water rich foods, low in fruits and vegetables, and high in processed foods and fats and sugars and salts, I'd much rather you guys eat, you know, 50% raw and 50% a healthy, plant-based, you know, low heat cooked uh, diet. It would be far healthier in my opinion. You know, some steamed broccoli, you know, with some with a salad instead of eating some of these concoctions that have, you know, a lot of nuts and seeds and, you know, uh, salts and, and oils in it. It's really sad. So we want to look for recipes that have high water content or contain mostly fruits and vegetables. Of course, you know, there's times to party and maybe you have a little bit of a treat sometimes but I mean I make plenty of stuff with you know nuts and seeds and dried fruits that are n nice delicious desserts 
that are not using, you know, uh, agaves and sugars and things like that. They're still containing fruits. I mean, I make a great mango pie. It does fresh mangoes and dried mangoes and flax meal as the crust, you know. And, yeah, it's not exactly as decadent as some of the ones they make with agaves and all this stuff, but it's a hell of a lot healthier and it still tastes good, you know. So, we, once again, doing the best, best we can. Let's see, three raw foods that can sabotage your health. That's a fun one. Which I think I have them on the table here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, once again, we talked about this a little bit earlier. So, like extracted fats. So, olive oil, once again, if we look at the nutrient fat, nutrition facts, it's pretty much except for the fat, which is really high. Everything else is zeros, right? This is, this is also literally a junk food because it's 100% fat. In one tablespoon of this, it's 119 calories. Right? So if you have just one tablespoon over your salad, a nice, big, giant head of romaine lettuce that probably has 80 calories, you put just one tablespoon, and most people don't measure one tablespoon, they're just pouring on the oil and pouring on the vinegar. Now you're eating more calories from fat with no nutrition than you are from the lettuce. And once again, we want to focus on you know, nutrient-dense food. So yes, you may need to eat a higher quantity of lettuce to be satisfied. So yes, we want to in my opinion, unless, you know, of course, if the all, eating the olive oil gets you to eat the lettuce, because you're not at the point where you could, you know, eat the lettuce without of all of, all of uh, you know, oil, vinegar dressing, I think that's a good thing. But it'd be much more, much better, in my opinion, to use the whole food source. So instead of eating olive oil, because there's no olive oil trees, what would, we eat in, what would we eat in nature instead of olive oil? Whole olives. Olive trees actually are something that grows really great here in Vegas. I was actually picking fresh olives uh, from my friend's tree. Now you can't just eat the olives, pick the olives off the tree and eat them. You have to cure them first, whether that means just letting them dry in the sun, which will reduce some of the bitter aspects of that, or soaking it in water and changing the water every day if you put a little slit in it, yeah. or putting it in, you know, uh, like rock salt and letting it, you know, uh, basically ferment or whatever it does in there. And then I, to get some of the salt out, because I don't want all, all that salt, I could then take that and soak it in water for 10 days in the fridge and then it'll be cured with less salt. So eating whole foods, so one food that could sabotage your health is the oils. In my opinion, we do not want to eat any large amounts of oils. Another food that can sabotage your health is the sugar. I mean, we're all literally born with a sweet tooth, especially because of the time that we've been kids, we've all been fed refined sugar. So we have a really high sugar tolerance in my opinion. What this means is that you need a lot of sugar to be stimulated to like, wow, that tastes really sweet. And in nature, like if we only ate the sugars found in nature, not processed sugars, then our, our, like our sugar norm for most people is like way up here. And if you just ate fruits, it'd be like down here. Because you can get a really sweet fruit and sometimes it approaches like straight sugar, but it's never going to be as much unless you're drinking sugar cane juice, which is still not going to be as uh, sweet as refined sugar that they remove the water out of. So we really need to kind of bring down our natural level, level of where we believe something how sweet it should be. So from here down to here, and we're only gonna do that by slowly incorporating you know, more fresh fruits that have the natural you know, uh, sugar levels than the, than the higher sugars in coconut sugars, agaves, and even honey like that. So I would recommend, you know, once again, eating fresh fruits or dried fruits instead of processed sugars, because once again, they have more nutrients, plus it's gonna help normalize and stabilize where you think things should be. Like one of the things, my dad went on a 30-day water fast, and if you want to learn more about fasting, you want to visit a, a website, healthpromoting.com. It's a True North Health Center, and if you want to totally reset your body faster than anything else, it's a water fast. My dad lived on nothing but distilled water for 30 days. This is in a supervised environment with eight doctors on staff, including Dr. Claver, a pretty famous uh, vegan uh, medical doctor, and they monitor you, and I do not recommend fasting without medical supervision especially for 30 days to um, so go somewhere. But w what you'll learn after the fast, besides losing weight and moving, removing all the obstructions and l allowing your body to heal, you're going to realize, like my dad did, your taste buds are going to reset because now we're not being constantly stimulated by sugar, 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 salt, 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 fat, fat, fat every day. You've had nothing. And now the first time my dad ate avocado right after that, he's like, man, that was the fattiest, richest avocado I've ever eaten. And after the fast, then he had, you know, fresh fruits and like, wow, those are the sweetest fruits I ever had. Or he had some fresh celery juice. 
oh my god, that was so salty, saltier than anything I've ever tasted, because it, he reset his taste buds. And yes, that's the fast way to reset your taste buds, but the slow way to do that is to just eat whole foods. If you want things with salt, eat celery, eat, you know, even the seaweeds. Don't just start pouring salt on your stuff. If you want something sweet, use fresh fruits or even dried fruits. If you want something fatty, instead of the oils, eat the whole olives or eat whole nuts and whole seeds instead of the extracted, just the extracted fat from that. You're going to get more nutrition and it's going to be less calories and it's just going to be healthier for you. So uh, three raw foods that can sabotage your health as we were talking about. So we first talked about the oils instead of extracted oils, we want to eat the whole food version. Uh, instead of sugars, we want to eat the whole food version. And we talked a little bit too about the salt. Instead of salt, we want to eat the whole food version, whether it's celery, dehydrated celery, you know, maybe some uh, seaweeds. Uh, I like to use some sauerkraut. I have a little bit of salt in there because that's much less salty. Plus it has all the nutrients with it as carriers. Uh, let's see, factors besides foods that are critical to your health. We talked about that in the beginning of the talk. You know, we want to get enough sleep. We want to get appropriate amount of exercise for us and get some movement in there. Also live in a, uh, I, I don't like to say stress-free like a, a stress-free life, I like to say more peaceful life. So being at peace, you know, if you have a job that you hate, but you gotta pay the bills, I mean, I quit my job at a certain point. I li did live off credit cards and amassed a quite a big uh, debt for a while because I hated the job and I didn't wanna do it and I was much healthier and happier after I quit my job. Not that I'm gonna say go out and quit your job, but. These are some things you might want to think about. You know, if there's things that are in your life that you don't particularly care for or like, you know, you can make the change today because those are very critical to your health besides just the food you eat, your thoughts in your head. That I'm, and I'm not any kind of psychologist. And I'm not even going to talk about that because I don't, I mean, I have to deal with my own stuff, but I'm not going to deal with other stuff about that. Food's much easier. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Wow, you guys made it through the whole video. Did an excellent job. Hope this video was really helpful for you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already to be getting all the latest updates and all my hints and tips and all my videos uh, that I'll be putting out in the future. And uh, the last thing I want to ask you guys is that uh, please post down below a comment and put the one tip that you heard in this uh, presentation that helped you the most that you think will benefit you the most. Uh, this will do two things. Number one, it may help other people to know that, you know, what tips can also help them, but also give me some feedback on, you know, uh, what can help people the most and may influence my teaching uh, as in the future. So uh, in the end, I just want to sum it up. You know, the message in this video is to eat more raw foods. And by that, I don't mean kale chips. I mean fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and get the highest quality you possibly can which in my opinion includes growing it yourself if you have the land, the space, but you can even grow you know, sprouts or microgreens in your apartment in New York City. Be sure to check my other channel, Growing Your Greens, where I teach you guys how to grow your own food because it really is just that important. Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time, and remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.